Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTut and welcome back to Motion Graphics Posters. Without any further ado, let's crack right on with recreating this poster you see right here. Tip -tut. Okay, so we have finished recreating our first um, graphics here. We haven't done any animating at all. This is the fun bit, so hopefully you stuck around this long. Uh, we're going to animate each of these individual um, assets and then hopefully end up with something that looks pretty similar to this here. Now you can see some cool stuff going on if I just play through this. We've got our lines growing on, our shapes spinning in. I quite like this sort of glitching in effect that we've got here uh, with the text and the rocks. And then we've got our spinning smaller shapes around the edges as well. Okay, so let's just jump right in. First things first, we want to animate these lines. To do that, I'm gonna hide everything that I don't need to see. So I'm gonna hide my shape underneath, I'm gonna hide my text, and I'm gonna hide all of my rocks. Um, I'm gonna leave the grid because it's not too distracting for me, and we're gonna get started. So let's take our shape that we want to animate first. Let's take this circle on top. Um, just for simplicity, and let's twirl down that layer. Under this small add icon here, I'm gonna choose trim paths. With that trim path, I'm gonna add some keyframes and I'm gonna copy those keyframes across the rest of the layers. So I'm gonna drag my end down to zero, and you can see already that that's cutting, if I click off the layer at the moment, that's cutting back from where we started drawing the line to where we ended drawing the line. I'm gonna drag that all the way down to zero, and I'm gonna keyframe that end position. Let's move on two seconds, uh, and I'm on a 30 frames per second um, composition here. So I'm going to hit Control and Shift and then Right, and that will move me on 10 frames. Do that twice more. That's 30 frames. Three more times, two seconds, 60 frames. Let's pop in another keyframe and drag that up to 100%. I'm going to grab both of these and hit F9 and that easy eases them. What that basically does is it makes it a little bit slower at the beginning and a little bit slower at the end. So if we watch that, it should grow in quite nicely. Looks pretty good. I'm happy with this. So I'm going to take my trim paths, control C to copy that, and I'm going to paste it on every other layer. So triangle bot, you can hit control V, press U to bring up that. Now you can see that I've accidentally pasted that too far. So if I just undo it, I can go back and scrub to the beginning of my timeline, paste it again, press U, and you'll see that they're all now in alignment. Let's do that with the rest of our layers here, and you should see them disappear one by one, which is great. That's exactly what we want. If I press U on all of these, that will bring up the keyframes that we've just started editing. And dragging through, we can see them start to grow, which looks okay, but we'd like them to grow a bit more naturally than that. At the moment, they all grow in at once, which is fine, but not for our purposes. Go back to our other composition, you can see here that as the first shape grows in, the second doesn't start to grow until that point has become visible on the previous shape. So what we're gonna do is go back to our tutorial here grab this shape, we're gonna choose which one's gonna be first, and that's gonna be our triangle main. And we're gonna grow that shape until we realize where the first corner is. Now the first corner at this point is gonna be just here. So let's go to the frame where that starts to turn the corner, and then let's find this shape here, which I believe is single line. Good. Now we can press open square bracket, or you can just drag your layer, and that will push the start of your layer and all keyframes along with it to that starting point, which means now when we drag through, that shape will start to grow just after that line crosses that point. You might want to push it a few frames earlier just so that it grows a bit quickly because of course we've eased it in, so it's growing slowly at the beginning. As that shape starts to hit here, we might want this bottom shape to start growing in. So let's do the same, open square bracket, it will start to grow, awesome. That's gonna hit here, it's gonna grow through. Now I want this shape to hit this line here as this circle does. So as that starts growing, what I'm gonna do is find the point where it just about meets and I'm gonna take my circle layer and I'm gonna push that. And as you can see, as I push it along, I can see the end of the line, okay? So I'm going to drag that until those two points pretty much meet there. What that means is when they come through, that's gonna look quite nice. They'll grow and they'll hit each other and carry on through. So let's take a look at that. Looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Very nice. Let's check that against the original. Pretty similar. Okay, I like that. Nice and slow, nice and chill. Very cool. Lovely. That's the first bit of animating done. Well done, it's as simple as that. So let's take a look then. After this, let's animate our um, shape here, our, our leaf. Now, you can see in the original one, 
that this, this first version of this shape drifts up in opacity as a solid, positions itself, jumps around a bit. There's a second one with this kind of Venetian blinds effect on it. And then the final one, which comes in just nice and simply fades and goes up. Let's take a look at what's going on there in the original. So if we go down to inner here, you can see this is looking pretty complicated, but don't worry, we'll get there with our own composition. If I go down to our rock here, you can see that we've got all these layers jumping about. We've got some keyframes on these for position and opacity, position and opacity, position and opacity, position and opacity. It's all pretty simple. It's just been jumped around and cut up to make it look more complicated than it is. So let's do that with our main one here. First thing, let's just rename this to leaf so it's a bit easier to see within our timeline. And let's choose a point where we want that to come in from. I'm going to say probably as this line here starts to hit, we could have it jump up. That might look quite nice. So let's go to about here, press open square bracket to push it there. We're going to need a position and an opacity keyframe. Going to keyframe both of those. And I think I'm going to move on maybe one second. So that's control shift, right, right, right. Let's pop in some other keyframes and move back. This is important. Move back to our first keyframes. From here, I'm going to press shift and down a few times until my shape hits just about the bottom of that hexagon. Let's change the opacity down to zero. Grab all of these keyframes, hit F9. Look at that now, and it drifts up. But it's not quite popping enough. These grow nicely when they grow in slowly, but this one I think needs a bit more energy to it. So with these keyframes selected, I'm going to go to our graph editor up here, and I'm going to drag all these keyframes around. And using this little yellow handle, I'm going to drag that to the left. Now this is adjusting our speed curve. If your graph looks like uh, this, you're on the wrong graph. This is your value graph, and you want to be editing your speed graph. So you should have a little triangle that looks a little bit like a mountain. Now when we look back at this animation, boom, pops into position in a much cooler way. Okay. However, that's just one, and on this version, we've got three that jump about and glitch and do all sorts of cool stuff, so let's do that. Let's go back to our tutorial main. I'm gonna duplicate this layer twice, okay? And on the second one, I'm gonna press um, this keyframe button here to go back to the start. Control shift right, moves 10 frames. Open square bracket, pushes that layer 10 frames over. Same thing again. And we've now got three layers that come in. One, two, three, perfect. Let's grab our first layer here and hide the other two for now. On this first layer, I'd like you to go to Effects and Presets, type in Fill. That's going to bring up a fill color that you can drag onto your layer. And what that will do is, as you can see, it just fills your entire layer with that single color. Now, the red is a bit garish. You can see on our main value here, it's gone to this sort of orangey color that, fixes, uh, that fits in with the background. So let's grab our nice dark pink, which looks fine. Okay, but let's mess around with the blending mode and see if we can't find something that looks a bit better. Multiply might look quite nice. Maybe lighten might look quite nice. Maybe color dodge might look quite nice. Oh, color dodge is just white. It doesn't look great. <laughs> uh, let's try color burn. That looks pretty good. I quite like color burn because it adds a little bit of gradient there where it reaches the lighter color down to the darker color. So let's have a look at that. Boom, very nice. However, if we go back to our main here and look again, you can see that it jumps around on our first shape, disappears, positions itself to the right, cuts away again. That's very simple to do. All we're gonna do is break up these layers, but we're not gonna do that until we've done the rest of the work with the Venetian blind um, version and the finished version as well. So bear with me, and then at the end, we'll cut it all up and it'll look really good. So we're happy with this one. Comes into full position here. What I'm gonna do is go to the end of my keyframe like so, and I'm gonna press Alt, close square bracket, that's gonna cut that layer off so that it disappears when that section is done, okay? I'm gonna press U on the next layer, make it visible, go to the right uh, and choose Alt, close square bracket. Now for this one, I'm gonna need my Venetian blinds transition. I'm gonna drag that over to leaf two. It's gonna disappear, but don't panic. That's just because your transition completion in your effects controls is at 100%. If you drag that down, you should see it start to come back into play. You might wanna play with things like the width of your Venetian blinds and the angle to get the angle that you want. Maybe I want negative 135, which is 45 degrees. That looks pretty good. However, the transition completion is a bit much. So what I'm gonna do is drag that to about 59. Looks pretty good to me. We can check that against the original. 
yeah, that's cool. It's jumping in, it's looking pretty all right. Nice one. So what we've got here is a shape that comes up, uh, but it's already still at 59% and staying there. So if we press U on our layer again, that'll bring up our Venetian blinds. And you can see that's because our layer keyframes have offset themselves a little bit. This is now going all the way up from 100 to 59. Unfortunately, um, that's the wrong way around. So what you can do is you can time reverse that if you'd like. Now this will go from completely unvisible to 50%. Let's drag this from zero to 100. And this will go from empty to full and then disappear, which is perfect. Still not looking quite chaotic as the other one, but we'll get there, don't worry. This final one then, we just want to turn visible again, and that will come back into position and stay there. So we're happy with all of this. Let's press U on all of these so that they bring up just the keyframes that we want. Now this one we don't want to cut off because this is the one that's going to stay until the end of our design. Let's find a point where we're happy with this shape. Bam, looks pretty good about there. Now I'm going to press Control Shift D with that layer selected to split it. This retains all of the keyframes. If I press U, those keyframes are still there. And press U again to hide them. Let's move over, say, three frames. Let's just control them right. And press Control Shift D again. Now we can grab this little chunk of layer, okay? And if we press U and select both position keyframes and move over one of them, then we can move that, say, Shift right just once. What that's gonna do, as you can see, is it jumps across like so. Might jump to the right, jump back again. That's pretty good. Let's have it just disappear now. So Control Shift D, then move over a few frames again. Control Shift D again, and then just delete that middle one. Now you can see that when this comes in, it jumps, it disappears. Looks pretty good, yeah? Nice, okay. Let's bring this leaf here a bit earlier. As it starts to come in, let's control shift D, move over a few frames, control shift D again, delete that first one. As that starts to fill up again, like so, control shift D, move over a few frames, control shift D. Then on this one here, why don't I just move over a touch? Yeah? Now let's take a look at that. It's pretty good, huh? Let's do one slight little jump on this last shape here. Control shift D, control shift D. Let's move this guy over a little bit. Move him over to the left, just for a bit of variation. And there you go. We can have it jump. You can even have it jump and then disappear by just dragging that layer for a few frames. So it jumps to the left, disappears, and then cuts back in again. Let's grab all three of these layers, shift them over a little bit. Boom, 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 boom. Nice, maybe a bit earlier. Boom, 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 boom. That looks pretty good. Now let's look at all of these layers. There you go. There's your glitching effect. It really is as simple as that. Okay, let's collapse down all of these layers here and take a look at what we've got so far. Lines coming in, glitch and shape coming up. Looks pretty good. All right, nice one. I think that'll do for today. What we'll do next time is we'll work on um, these triangles, uh, editing the text and working this um, animated background hexagon in as well. And then we'll be finished. So thank you very much for joining me, everybody. Wow, let me try that again. Thank you very much for joining me, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this series. If you have, let me know in the comments below if you want more of this sort of thing. Uh, and hopefully I'll see you next time for the finale of this series, Motion Graphics Posters. See you then. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.